Shen, thank you, and welcome to Little John Coliseum for the start of a new era ACC Gymnastics here on ACC Network with former Olympic silver medalist Samantha Peshek. I'm Alex Perlman. This is the inaugural dual conference meet here on ACC Network, and we are so excited with a brand new program in now 19th ranked Clemson after a huge opening meet, 196.325, which was the most ever for a team in an inaugural meet in its history. And then Pittsburgh, a team really on the rise under first year head coach Casey Joe McPherson, Samantha, looking to build up that program once again. This is Kennedy Duke, the sophomore from British Columbia for Pittsburgh. Judges are, of course, looking for those handstand positions. I'd like to see her hit a vertical position. Like a bit of an improvement there over her 9.675 last week. So far, a 9.75 for Jordan. Eve Jackson with a 9-8 just a moment ago for Clemson. Here's how it works in NCAA gymnastics. Four apparatuses, six gymnasts per team compete in each event. You can drop the lowest score, so there is some leeway there. And then for Clemson, they start on vault. It's called Olympic order, vault, bars, beam, and floor. And there was Molly Arnold. Yeah, I saw your Chenko one and a half. That's starting from a 10.0, really difficult vault that we see from a lot of the top programs around the nation. Nine seven five last week. A bar specialist. This is her only event. Suffered a season-ending arm injury in her first ever meet, and then didn't compete at all in 2022. Still waiting on Kennedy Duke's score for Pittsburgh. So Faith can go, but great start for Clemson on vault. You see Molly Arnold following up Eve Jackson's 9-8. At the moment, they could drop the 9-7-2-5 from Rebecca Wells. Faith has been an athlete that's getting more comfortable on this event. They said she's always working on the details. And when we say details, we need those ankle bones squeezed together in those vertical handstand positions. So the score did come in for Kennedy Duke of 9575. Pittsburgh will hope to drop that. Panthers looking to build on a couple of team scores in their first two meets in the 193s. They are so much more capable than that. We expect them to start putting it together. Lauren Rutherford for Clemson. Clemson really pushing the difficulty to Yurchenko one and a half in a row. This is the best vault we've seen of the night so far. I really love that she's patient before she twists, and that shows up in the landing. You can see she gets all the way around. Good air awareness for her. NC State transfer absolutely thrilled with that one. Sam not making the mistake last week with the Yurchenko one and a half, hopping back under rotated it. This time, just that little step forward should be a great score coming in for Lauren Rutherford, starting at that 10 0 start value. A lot of international flair on this Pittsburgh team as well. Six coming from outside the U.S. and one of them, Julie Matzo, the freshman from Norway. Yeah, and this really is the strongest event for Pittsburgh here. So hoping to get some good numbers here at the beginning of the meet. They were really consistent in the fall and it seems like they've been continuing that trend here at the beginning of season. But the next step for them is focusing on the landings. 
Casey Joe McPherson said bars specifically, very consistent event for them in the fall. Hoping for a few more sticks for bars coach and former Michigan great Alexi Funk said that was a real point of emphasis for them in the gym this week. Waiting for Faith Lero's score to come in for Pittsburgh. Lauren Rutherford's did, and it tied a career high of 9.85. So there it is, 9.55. At the moment, that would be the score that could be dropped, but Kennedy Duke's 9.575 will count. I'd like to see her be really aggressive on these handstands. Good job locking that one in. Stalder position into the double back. And again, we saw that point of emphasis for this team, these controlled landings. Here's that aggressive cast handstand. That's a toe to handstand. And then the double back. Just move the left foot slightly. That'll be a deduction. Madison Minner, 10-0 start value in the lineup as well. Such a dynamic athlete. Yurchenko tucked one and a half. That also starts from a 10.0 start value. And this is a difficult vault to execute well, and she does that nicely. So building off an excellent vault rotation right now for Clemson, who is looking at the moment like they're going to do better than that 48-8-7-5 that they put up in the opening night win against William and Mary. Emily Todd, the freshman from Bristol, England, followed up her 9-8 in the season opener with a 9-9. Final words of wisdom from Bars coach Lexi Funk. Bar's not necessarily, Sam, her specialty at Michigan, but Casey Joe specifically told us she has been such a great Bar's coach. Sometimes I feel like the events that you're not as strong on, you are a better coach on them because you've had to learn all the tricks along the way. Beautiful Jaeger release move. I like the air time she got there. Nice bail to handstand straight up to that high bar. Very clean routine so far. Again, we're looking for this landing right here. Beautifully done. You could tell she was way above the mat before she landed on it. Her eyes were spotting the ground. Good job from Emily. Check out this piked Jaeger. Her arm position goes all the way out to the side. Little unique there. And of course, this is what they've been working on in the gym. Double back to a stick position. Trinity Brown in the anchor spot. Absolutely oh. stuck the Yurchenko full. Yurchenko layout full. And that's exactly what head coach Amy Smith was hoping to see this week. She wanted to them to drill those Yurchenko fulls to the ground, settle in faster than me, and you could not ask for anything more than to finish and anchor this vault lineup with a perfect stick. She had a 9-8 last week. I'm going to venture to say that will beat it. Remember, it is only a 9-9-5 start value, but you do it perfectly. You get all 995. We will see. Right now, they're dropping a 9725 in the leadoff from Rebecca Wells. This is a very strong vault rotation. And the score's a 9 9. Outstanding vault lineup right there. Sam. This Clemson team has so much momentum, so many good vibes behind them right now. It's easy to be a fan and easy to see why they've sold over 3,000 season tickets and they're expecting a sellout here tonight in Little John Coliseum.
Julia Bedminster, the reigning ACC Gymnast of the Week for Pittsburgh. She'll anchor them on bars. Again, looking for those aggressive handstand positions. Sometimes it helps when you push down on the bar to get it fully vertical, finishing strong double layout. And again, good clean landing. That is what Pittsburgh has been working on. And on both sides, doesn't matter what team, when a coach tells us this has been the point of emphasis this week and then it shows up in the competition, you know it's a job well done. She's got a little swagger there when she stuck that landing. I'm here for it. As she should. Following up Emily Todd's 9.825. So we'll wait to see what Bedminster's score is coming in. We'll update you on the score when we come back. But it is a new era in college gymnastics. It's the first weekend of ACC competition. Find out why Clemson's already expecting to challenge for a conference title next. Clemson Gymnastics is a team that's adaptable, resilient, and fierce. We're coming in hot, and we're so excited to showcase what we've been working on. Our first meet, um, you could really feel the fans into it. To have that fan support right off the bat is amazing. Um, we could really feel it down there while we were competing and hopefully we can continue to build that. Our first meet in Little John was insane. The crowd, the 8,000 people that came out, I just cannot believe that many people came, and we appreciate everyone's support so much. Being a part of the first ever gymnastics at Clemson means the whole world to me, and being a part of this team is something that I've dreamed of. The level of support and, and just how special the people here in the athletic department in Clemson in general, it's like nowhere I've ever been. And I'm just so grateful to, to be here and be given the opportunity. Alex Perlman, Sam Peshek back with you. And Sam, it really speaks to what Amy Smith has been able to do in this year getting the program ready that they have hit the ground running so strong. Oh, she has a team that is bought in. They are hungry to not just compete, but to be legendary for this program. They put in the work. They have learned so many new upgrades. They've been adaptable throughout this season, and it's really just the beginning for this Clemson team. And what a time it is to be a Tiger in terms of women's sports. They've added three programs since 2020, all of them having so much success. Softball hosting an NCAA regional last year. Women's lacrosse in their inaugural season was ranked in the top 25 as well. And they are certainly investing in their women's athletes, I'll say. Well, check out this Clemson Gymnastics facility. They moved in early October and they got to train in this beautiful facility. This is top notch, everybody. It's incredible. Look how much space they have with a team of about 20 gymnasts. This is a dream right here. Everything is pointing to even more success for Clemson as their history goes on. As it is a great start for them over Pittsburgh with a big lead after one rotation. Clemson to bars, pit to vault when we return. Tuesday, it's a men's basketball doubleheader here on the ACC Network. First, 7 Eastern, number 7 Duke facing Louisville, followed at 9. BC taking on Virginia Tech. Both games also available on the ESPN app. And the Blue Devils looking to bounce back from their loss to Pitt. Doesn't happen very often at Cameron Indoor, but it did yesterday. And the Panthers trying to continue that momentum after one rotation. Big lead for Clemson. Trinity Brown certainly the highlight. And Sam, that bodes really well for the Tigers because they are about to go to their highest ranked apparatus in bars a 49 225 last week and they got the exact same lineup ranked number 15 in the country already in that event yeah they've been dialing in those landings in practice and so i expect to see an even bigger score on bars than last weekend we saw that trending in the right direction on vault as well so it's an exciting meet so far julie matzo in the leadoff spot for pitt 
Yurchenko layout full. She took a step forward. I'd like to see her take a step in the correct direction, which means over rotating. She opened up. Sometimes you going for the stick leads you to make that kind of mistake. Clemson leads off with Rebecca Wells at a 9.725 earlier on in her first event on vault. She'll compete in the all around today. And she was really crucial in this lineup last weekend. She stuck her dismount and it really started the trend of being contagious. Let's see if she can do it again. Tuck full in. Not quite the same stuck position as last week, but big difficulty with the full in. Tuck full in. It was a controlled landing, just not quite the stuck that stick that she was wanting. So here's Lucia Jacob following up the 965 from Madso. Only competing vault. She actually added a full just this week. Former Canadian national team member. Good body position in the air. And again, I'm saying it on repeat, it's just those landings. So the next step after getting comfortable with a new skill is focusing on the details, absorbing the mat and building up your air awareness. Eve Jackson will follow up Rebecca Wells here with a 9825 last week. Part of this Bars team, listen to this, already ranked higher than Utah, Minnesota, Missouri, and Florida. Those are the type of numbers that they are putting up at the beginning of their program's history. Yeah, Amy Smith told us about how she felt watching their bars rotation, and she said stick after stick. She just looked at him and said, that's my team. And she's an intense, passionate coach as it is. So I love seeing her in the corner of the screen. If you get a glimpse of her, she's usually high energy and, and the first cheerleader to high five her athletes. Coming over from Utah State, five seasons as the head coach there for the former UCLA All-American and National Champion. Sam, what are the judges looking for here on bars? Of course, those handstand positions. You want to see aggressive to that vertical position. Release moves. You want good, clean release moves and nice distance away from the bar when you catch. And of course, those dismounts to a clean, controlled, and stuck landing. Eva's gotten the go-ahead from the judges. Rebecca Wells score in it in 9-6-5. So we have seen three gymnasts go so far in the second rotation for both teams combined. All of them 9-6-5s. Big straddle Jaeger. Of course, the judges are looking for a Jaeger release move that's above the bar. She got the job done there. Another big, difficult, tuck full in dismount. Not quite a stick, but again, they're pushing the difficulty, and I like to see that. Check out high, how high above the bar she gets. Straddled Jaeger directly into that overshoot combination for bonus there. Into the tuck full in. Does a nice job spotting the ground, just didn't quite get the stick. Sierra Ward, fifth-year gymnast from Maryland. Another Yurchenko full, and if you're wondering what's a Yurchenko, it's a roundup onto the board, back handspring onto the table. Yurchenko is referred to the pre-flight of a vault. Ward was an Eagle All-Tournament teamer on vault last year. That's the former conference that Pitt competed in. And now moving over to the ACC with four schools competing gymnastics as we add Clemson into the fold. ACC gets to sponsor gymnastics for the first time. And what a conference it should be as well with Clemson, Pitt, NC State, and North Carolina. What a future this young woman has. The redshirt freshman Lily Lippett from Ohio won the Bars title with a 9-9 in her first ever collegiate routine. It was the first score of 9-9 or better in Clemson history happening last week. 
Yeah, and I'm particularly excited to watch this athlete in college. I followed her elite career, and she was always so fun to watch, very dynamic. And what you're going to notice about her is her amazing technique across the board, starting with those aggressive cast handstands. Nice job holding that position. Legs glued together on that combination. She does a nice job pushing down on the bar when she goes for the handstand. Finishing double back. Again, not quite the stick that they saw last week, but super clean across the board throughout this routine. Nice release move straight into what we call a pack salto release move from high to low. Lippitt already a three-time USA national team member, working on Eve Jackson's 9.825, and now Shruti Anand. Front pike half. Coaches say she got stronger from week one to week two, getting more comfortable competing this vault. This one starts from a 10.0, similar to the Yurchenko one and a half. And on transferring from NC State before this year, along with Clemson's Lauren Rutherford, former teammates with the Wolfpack. So it's far, Clemson can that... still drop that 9.65 from Rebecca Wells in the leadoff spot. Thursday here on ACC Network in the ESPN app, a women's hoops doubleheader starts at 6 Eastern, Florida State and Duke. Followed at 8 when Miami faces Deja Kelly at number 23, North Carolina, on Thursday. Excited to see Caitlin de Guzman make her ACC debut. We've been watching her for years, the grad student from Dallas, transferring in from Kentucky for Clemson's inaugural season. Starting off with another Straddle Jaeger. Wow, the fight on that release move. She was extremely far away from the bar, was able to get the catch and make the combination difficult to do. Love to see these athletes fighting through those routines and finishing with a difficult double layout. Look at how far away from the bar she was really using those go-go gadget arms to make the combination. Excellent work from her, finishing double layout dismount to a controlled landing. De Guzman was the final gymnast to commit to team one, and Amy was so happy when she did. Julia Bedminster. Nice technique off the vault table. Yurchenko layout full. Good body positions in the air. She transferred in from LIU, the program record holder on vault with a 9875. Had a 9 8 last week. Yeah, and this is still an event that Pittsburgh is developing depth. So they're pushing those numbers in the gym to hopefully have some more optionality throughout this season with their athletes. Final words of wisdom here from Eric Lewis. Lewis, the associate under Amy Smith at Utah State, took him over to Clemson to start this program. And now Lauren Rutherford waiting on Guzman's score to come in. And here it is, a 9-8, very solid. Rutherford went 9-8-2-5 last week against William and Mary. A big win for the Tigers in their first meet in program history. Three scores yeah, of 9 8 or better counting at the moment here.
you since coming over to the Panthers? It's been awesome. It's been super exciting. We're really glad to have ACC Gymnastics getting started. There's tons of energy within the conference. We're just excited to show everyone what we've got. You put out some solid numbers. I know you guys are working on building that consistent landings and also the depth. What are you seeing from your team here tonight? Yeah, I've seen, I'm seeing tons of energy and that's something we really wanted to have coming in here. Lots of excitement and really just trusting in our gymnastics. We had a great week of training, so we want to take steps forward each week. Coach, thank you so much. Really appreciate it. Thank you. All right, Casey Joe tasked with leading the Panthers into the ACC. What makes her the right fit for Pitt? Well, her gymnast will tell you when we come back to Little John Coliseum. We are halfway home of our first dual ACC meet here on ACC Network. Casey Jo is probably one of the greatest people I've ever met. She's an incredible coach. She is very calm, and I think she really tunes in to what everyone, every individual needs. Casey Jo did a really good job on just connecting to us as individuals and just getting to know us and I think that helped me um, in the gym and outside the gym just being heard, being seen and yeah overall I just love what I do and I love the people around me. She's brought this calm spirit to us. She really knows how to calm us down when we start to get anxious. She's just very calming and like knows what each person needs individually and is there for them. It's an amazing feeling to be here, to be the fourth coach, to continue the legacy that's been here and really start ACC Gymnastics for Pitt. It's just really cool timing to be a part of that. Alex Perlman, Sam Peshek back with you. And Sam, a wealth of experience is what Casey Joe McPherson brings to Pitt. Served 10 years under Shannon Welker in Missouri. The last three as an associate head coach, and she was honestly one of the best bars or beam coaches that is in the entire country there. She also has a big gymnastics resume. So talk about someone that has so much experience to bring to this team. She told us that a goal of hers was to really connect and build that relationship with her athletes. And judging by those interviews, it seems like she's done a good job at that. But other than those relationships, she says that they want to be competitive in the conference. So this is a great test uh, at the beginning of the season for them. And any head coach would tell you that they are nothing without their assistants, and she has three incredible ones at Pitt in year number one. Lexi Funk coming over from Michigan, formerly a terrific gymnast there, three-time All-Big Ten. Amanda Wellick coaching floor. She is elevating that lineup as well, the 2014 SEC Freshman of the Year as well. There are so many excellent people involved here in the coaching staff for Pittsburgh. We've got the third row rotation coming up when we come back. Two rotations down and two to go here in Clemson, South Carolina. Tigers extending their lead after the second rotation when they were on bars now seven tenths and the Tigers are really continuing that strong start to the season here Sam Pashek. They look good. They're technically sound, and the things for them are just those little details that every team across the country is working on, those stuck landings. A huge crowd. They're expecting a sellout. The attendance at 8631, over 8,600 fans here, and this is only meet number two. It has been really excited exciting to be a part of and some last words of wisdom here for Amy Smith as Clemson heads to Beam where they are an incredibly solid team she said that she thinks she they can stand up against any top 10 Beam team because why they got three gymnasts from Utah State where she was formerly the head coach when they were in the top 10 on Beam and then you add a gymnast like Lily Lippitt who starts off Clemson yeah, she's an athlete that is incredibly solid in this role. She's just a freshman, of course, but you're going to tell that she is so solid, and that's the type of person you want leading it off. Check this out. Front aerial into a back handspring swing down right into a dance combination. I love watching that. That is so cool. Amy asked Lily 
in the preseason to be leadoff, and she immediately agreed. And Sam, that's kind of what you need, somebody that doesn't hesitate, and they say, I got you, coach. Good arm positions. You see how strong her arms are in those finish positions when she lands her skills. Doing a front gainer full off the side of the beam. That looked like an almost identical routine as she did last weekend, which shows her consistency, especially in this role. Head coach Amy Smith said she loved her reaction, but this was particularly a highlight for me. Front aerial into a back handspring swing down. Her arms continue to move, which means she got the connection. That's important. Coming off a 9.75 in her collegiate beam debut. That should be another great score. For Pitt, a big improvement last week when they put up a 48.55. Kennedy Duke in the leadoff spot, performing on floor for the first time this season. Just vault and beam for her last year. Sam, what is it like to add floor to your repertoire midway through your career? Well, it's extremely difficult because you have to add that added endurance here to make it through the end of your routine and show dynamic control on your last pass. That's something they've been working on in the gym. Good start for Pittsburgh on floor. They've been focusing a lot on the leaps and the precision in the last couple weeks, and of course, control on the landings. So finishing that combination pass and control on the landings, exactly what head coach Casey Joe is looking for from her team. Lily Lippitt's score was a 9.85. Solid start for Pittsburgh to try to keep up with Clemson now on beam Bree Clark. 9.85 in her Clemson debut routine last week. And Sam showing her adaptability because that came after a really lengthy scoring review. She was still able to put up a huge number. Crazy power from Brie. Oh my goodness, she oh. almost saved that series. She started off with a standing front tuck, which uh, I'm not sure anybody else in the NCAA does. That's so difficult to do. Sometimes athletes that have more power naturally have a tougher time on balance beam controlling that momentum in their skills. Brie was an All-American on beam last year. Big bummer because that was a really good routine. She almost saved that that fall too. I'd love to see what went wrong. Here's the back handspring. Layout, very strange because she looked crooked. Tough to see a little bit from this angle. There is a little bit better. Her heel is completely off, but pulled it back on. I thought she might have a chance there. That would have been, that would have been really impressive. We will see Bree coming up fifth in Clemson's final rotation on floor where she was the Mountain Rim Conference floor specialist of the year. So something still to look forward to there. Sierra Ward for Pittsburgh. So we wait on Kennedy Duke score to come in at a 9-7 in the season opener. Jumps not quite as clean before her last pass, and they made a bit of an error on it. See if she can clean that up. 9-7 for Kennedy Duke in the leadoff for Pittsburgh. Coming in, it was a seven-tenths lead for Clemson.
I am loving this artistry in the floor routine of coach. Of course, coaches said that she really had an uncharacteristic air last weekend coming up right here, hoping to show up right now, said she's had a good week of practice. And a good recovery. Way to redeem herself. It's always good as an athlete when you make a mistake and then the next week you kind of are able to erase it in your mind and gain that confidence back. Well, for Clemson, if you are wondering about Eve Jackson's athletic ability, well, she has a pretty incredible uncle, Deshaun Jackson, the three-time Pro Bowl receiver who just announced his retirement in November after a 15-year career. So you're saying there's an athletic family there. Yeah, I think so. Also, her dad played for the Chiefs. Byron L. Triple series, backhand spring, layout, layout, difficult, off the bat, does it so nicely. Consistent rhythm throughout that. I'd like to yeah, see her have is... stronger arms on these skills right when she finishes. This is really important, though, following up the fall from Bree Clark, 9-2, if they want to keep this momentum going, the rotation. Ooh, a little sidestep there off balance on the dismount. And this was really smooth back handspring layout layout you can see her eyes spotting the end of the beam in the middle of those layout step outs good control there and so Bree Clark's 9-2 is still going away but we wait on the score from Eve Jackson remember you can drop one of the six scores the lowest goes away and now here is Hallie Copperweed who has been inserted into the floor lineup today. She was a late add as well, even though Casey Jo McPherson said she is ready to go after having shoulder surgery in the offseason. Sam, this is someone you add back into the lineup in the all-around. It immediately makes the team exponentially better. Open strong front tuck to double pike. Hallie was all eagle on every apparatus and in the all-around last year. She had nine individual titles. Athletes like Hallie that allows them to develop their depth, which is one of their goals this year. So her hitting this floor team right now not only is going to help the team score, but really give this floor team confidence that they can switch athletes in and out. Nice start for Pitt on floor. 9-7, nine, 9-7-2-5, seven, nine, seven, and then Copperweed's routine. Powerful athlete, front tuck into a double pike. No problems there. And last pass, finishing strong with a double back. Pulled up to selling that lunge position. You can see if you look closely, her toes just fighting into the ground not to take any other deductions. Eve Jackson's school score was a 9-6-7-5 on beam for Clemson. And here's Quinn Cool. She's going to be doing another triple series like we saw from her teammate Eve. Right here, handspring, handspring, layout. And she just looks so confident throughout this routine. For me, it's her posture. It's her arm positions that are pulled up.
starting that turn on Releve. Love to see it. And if there's one area for improvement from last weekend, it's actually not that. It was her dismount, but impressive that she was able to really essentially miss her foot, slip her foot, and then pull it back on and stay on the beam. And that's kind of the key after Bree Clark fell and a much better dismount. She took a big step to the side last week. Let's check out this front toss is what we call it. She really lands on one leg there, doesn't have any weight on that front foot, has to re-grasp the beam. Oh my goodness. Wow. I wish she could get extra points <laughs> for that. Unfortunately, she's not gonna get extra points, but saved herself the fall. Only four inches wide. And she was able to stay on it and maybe keep Clemson alive in this competition as well with the pressure being put on here by Pittsburgh. Julia Bedminster shared the floor title with a 985 last week. She's the reigning ACC gymnast of the week if you're just joining us. That four inch mat right there is no deduction to have in. You can see her ankles taped, so my guess is just it's an, a little extra padding early in the season. Hallie Copperweed, 9825 in her floor debut this season. Casey Jo loves her fun, upbeat personality in the gym. They want her to use her voice even more, but what she does out on the floor kind of speaks for itself, doesn't it? It was a really phenomenal routine, building some momentum there for the Pittsburgh team. This just continues to be party week after week inside Little John Coliseum. They have bested last week's attendance mark, 8,631, the official number. The support for women's athletics is really unparalleled here in Clemson, South Carolina. And we have seen it since 2020, adding softball and then women's across last year, and now Clemson Gymnastics. Rebecca Wells in the all-around competition following up the 9475 from Cool. And this is a really important event for her. It's an event that she can score high on, she needs to score high on. Really moving through good rhythm in this routine. Back handspring layout series. Aggressive to finish. I love seeing that. And they really need a good one. She's gone as high as 9925 in her time at Utah State. And just Kylan McWright to come after this. Very clean dismount. Just a small hop on the dismount. It's really the biggest deduction that I saw in that routine. And they really needed a big number. Good to see them show up. And remember, they did have a little bit of leeway, having a 7 tenths lead heading into the third rotation. But counting that 9-4-7-5 from Cool is going to open up the door. And on floor, Pitt only keeps building a 9-8-5, the score that comes in for Bedminster. So they've gone from 9-7 to 9-8-5. And now Emily Todd, who went 9-8-2-5 last week, and a big improvement from her first routine of this season. Opens double pike. She had an out of bounds last week, so good to see she's one for one staying in bounds there.
You'd imagine at home this one is an absolute showstopper. So I'm expecting a score increase from last weekend. She stayed in bounds, which means she <laughs> love the extra celebration there. Here's a highlight for me. Opens double pike, spots the ground. Beautiful finish. And here's that last pass. I'd like to see a little bit more rotation, getting her chest up when she lands. She took a step forward and we're looking for a step back for that lunge position. So Rebecca Wells did deliver in the clutch with a 9.85. And Kylan McWright from Parkland, Florida, another Utah State transfer, one of the six. Amy Smith told us they're working so hard on elevating her performance. Just want her to hit a beam set so bad and not put so much pressure on herself. Well, that was stunning that handspring layout you're going to notice the exquisite details in her performance her toe point all the way stretched through her fingers i mean that performance quality is beautiful this is the tuck full where she had some issues last week no problems there last week one judge gave her full rotation and one judge didn't so they worked really hard on getting that all around with no question marks this week Strong finish. Looks great being dropped into the anchor spot today. Gainer full off the side. You know, some athletes like more pressure. So they weren't out of the gate having to count those mistakes yet. She needed a really big score for them. She was able to deliver. I was one of those athletes that I liked a little bit more pressure too. So maybe we share have that in common. Here's that tuck full beat jump combination she struggled with last weekend. If it was up to me, there were no question marks in that combination here. Beautiful stuck gainer full dismount off the side. It's going to be a big score for them. And this is getting really interesting. Clemson finished out great on beam, but Florida has had an excellent, or rather Pittsburgh has had an excellent floor rotation here with Kennedy Dukes, 9-7 being dropped at the moment. And three scores of 9-8 or better coming up. Jordan Ewing will finish off. You're going to notice that she's an athlete that really focuses on the performance quality, facial ex expressions, engaging the crowd. So the right score come in at 9-9. A real save after the fall for Bree Clark for Clemson. that last pass last weekend and there was no problems there I mean what a stellar performance across the board Pittsburgh on floor love to see it check it out double back spots the landing pulls it up no landing deductions from what I see there we had a 48.55 last week on floor definitely gonna be better and an improvement here at Clemson we're joined by the Tigers first year head coach, Amy Smith. Amy, what has this whole journey been like for you from starting this program from scratch now to the first ACC competition? I mean, it's it's been an absolute dream come true. It's, it's just absolutely incredible. 
You guys have put up some big scores on the first three events. Your team showed a lot of fight on beam. What are you hoping to see from them on the last rotation? I think we've got a great floor lineup, and I just want them to go out and close this meet out the way that they can and close it out really strong right now. Amy, thank you so much for the time. All right, so Clemson continues to lead here as we head to the fourth and final rotation. It has absolutely been a party. This one living up to the billing with Clemson and Pitt competing in their first ever ACC meet. They can't help but look, dancing like we should. A lot to be happy about inside Little John Coliseum if you're a Clemson fan. A three and a half tenths lead over Pittsburgh with one rotation still to come. Alex and Sam back with you. And Sam, it was seven tenths. Now that's been cut in half because Pitt just put up a 49-1 on floor. That was impressive. They looked incredible across the board. They had some landing errors last weekend, but the confidence and consistency, especially on those landings and combination passes, really stood out to me. But what I'm also impressed with on the other side of things is Clemson. They had a fall early in the rotation, and so to have that pressure and to fight through all the way to the end of the lineup and put up some big numbers, that takes extreme, an extreme amount of focus from their end. Well, this might be the first ACC meet for both of these teams here today, but it wasn't the first in conference history. That was Friday night when the other two teams did battle NC State and North Carolina. This is going to be a really fun league to watch all season long. Well, it's a conference that's been pushing each other. They've been getting better and better each year. That iron sharpens iron mentality. Of course, NC State is rocking those sticks here on the vaults. And finishing on floor, beautiful controlled landing upright on that last pass. NC State gets the win. Chloe Negretti could very well be the ACC Gymnast of the Year when it's all said and done. But the story of the week, Ball State annihilating, obliterating, you could say, their program record with a 198.025. It's wild. They broke so many records in this competition. Unbelievable. Three perfect tens as well. Love to see those tens across the board. Arkansas on the road in Tuscaloosa setting a new program high under Jordan Weaver. 197.525. And then LSU with the best score of the season with a 198.125 in Baton Rouge. One more rotation still to come. Pit to beam. Clemson finishes on floor next. Three rotations in the books in Clemson, South Carolina. Well, the Tigers had a 7 tenths lead after the second, and then a bit of a slip up on beam. Floor, uh, took advantage, Pitt with that 49-1, uh, and now three and a half tenths is the lead. It's been cut in half, Sam, and it's just really showing you what this league could be and how competitive it is already. Well, it's been promising to watch Pitt just hearing the interview from Casey Jo McPherson on what she's been bringing to this program in terms of focus and discipline and just putting your head down to work. And on the other side of things, Clemson is also doing the same thing and trying to break records and create a legendary season. All right, this is really going to be interesting now for Pittsburgh because they have yet to break a 48 this season on beam. It has really been the Achilles heel for Casey Jo McPherson, which, interestingly enough, that's really her specialty. She was one of the premier beam coaches in the country when she was coaching at Missouri. They were 11th in the nation last season with the likes of Sienna Schreiber and Lisa Sharameta. But, Sam, now they've got a real opportunity and let's see if they can keep getting better week in and week out. Yeah, you mentioned it, Alex. This has been a really big focus event for them the last couple weeks. She said the first meet was just a fluke error, and she said, I think it got people more nervous than what we saw in their training. But this week, they did a lot of team assignments to hit consistently one after another, and she frame, how they're thinking about routines, and hoping for that positive change to show up right here in this competition.
Here is Kennedy Duke, who had a 9.725 last week. Bounced back from a fall in the season opener. Former Canadian national all-around champion from British Columbia. Opens back handspring layout. You see her arms bend a little bit on that back handspring. Sometimes that can actually make you crooked going into your layout. Good fight on that side aerial. You know, a, a common theme that they were working on in the gym is belief and confidence in this lineup overall. And I can tell she's a little hesitant throughout this beam routine with that broken connection there, wanting to finish strong here. Round up one and a half, and it was a good finish. Casey Joe happy about that lead off from Kennedy Duke. And now for Clemson to one of their strengths, 49-275 last week in their inaugural meet on floor. Tied for the 20th ranked team in the country with Kennedy, uh, Kentucky, that is, and Towson. Didn't count a score below 9-8-2-5 last Friday. Loving the quirky choreography from Lily. Again, just a freshman, so for her to show that performance quality it means she has a bright future here at Clemson. Yeah, it's such a unique routine, so no surprise that Amy Smith calls her our little unicorn. Absolutely brilliant. She's a mechanical engineer with a 4.0 GPA. Also, so creative that she sews all her own Clemson football game day outfits. And if there was any doubt about how all in she is on the Tigers, she has a betta fish back home in her apartment called Dabo Swimmy. Way to start out for Clemson on floor. High fives all around. Definitely deserved for Lily Lippett. Opens double back. Great air awareness there. Chest up in the landing. That's something the judges look for. And working out of that combination pass. Excellent job. I think you can see why Clemson should be very dangerous in this league and already has sights on an ACC championship in only their first year of existence. Emily Todd is following up Kennedy Duke's 9-5-5 in the leadoff spot for Pittsburgh. Yeah, Beam was not her favorite, historically speaking, but head coach Casey Joe McPherson said that before she goes on this event, all they talk about is how she likes Beam now, and that's really the first step in being good at balance Beam is just to like the event, or maybe just not hate the event is good step one. Nice back handspring layout. Had an error last week, but this week in training, she's been so solid. So they're expecting a great finish here. And what an improvement from Emily. She's been really intentional, and I love this unique mount right there. Very difficult to get things going. Strong back handspring layout. No problems there. Lily Lippitt with a 9.875. In the leadoff for Clemson as they look to close out Pitt and earn their first ACC win in their first try. 
And this is an upgrade for her. Full in. First pass. Nice job. Does not look like a new pass from her. She does that very well. Executed it perfectly last week as well with a 9875 last week. Just off of her career high, which is a 99. Good finish, two and a half punch front. That's what she used to open her floor routine with. So it's really impressive to me that she was able to upgrade in this floor routine and build that endurance to move her most difficult pass to the end of her routine. It just really shows across the board how hungry this Clemson team is to put in that work, that strength and conditioning to make these routines show up here. This is the apparatus that Casey Jo McPherson knows the best and that she really wants to improve too. I mean, you increase those, Sam, and you've got yourself a pretty good team score. Yeah, they're looking good so far. Knock on wood, of course. Always with Beam. 9.55 and 9.7 so far with Carla Fersoco. Opens back handspring layout. She scored an 8-8 last weekend, so this is really a routine that she's hoping to improve. And I'm seeing her be more aggressive, which usually leads to a better outcome on beam. I wonder what it's like to do a beam routine to a remix of Taylor Swift. I'm here for it. Pretty, pretty high energy finishing beam routine back, here. Finishing back handspring, Gator layout pull off the side, and she was so excited she almost forgot to salute right there. <laughs> I mean, they're on a roll. You see where there's still improvements to be made, but those little strides in the work they did in the gym this week is showing up. Coming up February 2nd, our next gymnastics meet on ACC Network when these very same Clemson Tigers host NC State. Trinity Brown making her Clemson floor debut. And Coach Amy Smith calls it an absolute showstopper. Okay, stuck Let's landing. Why. Couple of 9875s at the moment for Clemson. Yeah, for a new team, you would imagine that they might not have the depth to be interchangeable, but that's actually the opposite of what head coach Amy Smith told us. And that's why you're seeing so many new faces perform just as well here in this floor lineup. Brown in for Maggie Holman this week. As for Zoko score at the bottom right of your screen, pops up a 9-6 for Pitt on beam. Big. Okay, Swagger. She's got stuck landings. She's got performance quality. She's got Swagger. This is going to be a huge number for Clemson. 
front tuck to a double back. You know what this is saying to Amy is, I don't want to get taken out of this lineup. I want to be a staple in this floor lineup. You can trust me. And I think a job well done for Trinity. Well, she saw her in 2022 coming over from Utah State, competed vault and floor for the Aggies every meet in her freshman season. And can Pitt continue the momentum? Right now they drop the opening 955 from Duke. Jordan Ewing, 9825 last week, which shared the beam title against Kent State. That's the highest score for Pitt this year on this apparatus. I like how quick twitch she is as an athlete. Usually for athletes that are powerful, more dynamic, they almost need to be more patient on these landings. She does an excellent job of that, really sinking into the beam when she finishes. Loving the height on that leap combination. Stretched extension there. This is looking so good. It's gonna be a big one. Very impressive, and, and again, I'm saying this, you can tell the work they've put in on this event in the gym. Head coach Casey Joe McPherson has got to be proud. In your first year, you're looking for improvement. They go from 47-1 to 47-7, and so far, they're gonna have a better number than that when it's all over here in Clemson, South Carolina. Now the NC State transfer, Lauren Rutherford. 9.85 last week against William and Mary, which was part of a run of three straight scores of 9.85 or better. Browns in it in 9.8. That would be the one that can be dropped at this moment with three to go. the community has embraced this team. I mean, this is only the second meet in program history, and it's looking like any SEC environment that we've seen. What a show these Clemson athletes are putting on for everyone in the audience and for the fans in the stands that don't know much about gymnastics, I'm willing to bet they're going to be back for every single home meet and that's exactly what this team is hoping to start here at Clemson. Opens two and a half, punch front, nice combination work. No problems on the landing and finishing with a clean double back. There are three more meets at home for Clemson this season. That's going to be a tough ticket. And it's going to be even more difficult after what we've seen today. There's no doubt. All right, Jordan Ewing score was a 9.75. Right now the highest of the rotation. Julie Matso. Norwegian champion in 2020 and 2022, following that up. She exhibitioned last week and looked comfortable, but feedback for her coming into this meet is to be more aggressive. They want her to attack balance beam. What does that mean, Sam, to attack it? Be really aggressive on all of your skills. 
sometimes if you're nervous, you have a tendency to be hesitant and you really want to take the opposite approach on this event. Really, all, all four events. <laughs> but it's extra important on balance beam. Oh! You know, there's always a saying in gymnastics that where you look is where you go. And right when she landed, I saw her gaze down at the floor. And that's unfortunately exactly where she went. Five tenths deduction for that fall there. Hoping to drop the score from Julie. All right, look at her eyes at the end of this. She looks down right there and then ends up going there. It really did not look crooked to me. That was a nervous mistake because she could have planted her feet down and taken a breath, but unfortunately reacted. Just a freshman. So for Julie, I'm sure many better routines to come. Now the redshirt senior, Rebecca Wells. Let's see how her first pass goes because she put her hands down on that. And her first time out, it's a five-tenth deduction right off the bat. Lauren Rutherford score, by the way, a 9-9 that came in. So that 9-8 from Trinity Brown is still the one to be dropped. This is turning into a massive floor rotation for Clemson to close. already had a three and a half tenths advantage. Crowd pleaser Florentine. High energy, good tumbling passes. Love seeing the difficulty. She was able to fix that fall that she had last weekend. Here's the tuck full in. I'd like to take her see her take a step back. Backward. She took a step forward, which will be a deduction, but improvement from last weekend and ends with this combination pass. Well-deserved high fives for the Utah State all-around record holder. She's going to be a big part of what the Tigers do in year number one. Now, Hallie Copperweight. 9-2-5 last week. She's anchored both meets so far this year. She's capable of a 9-9-5, though. That was her career high just a year ago. She just looks so comfortable and confident up there. Smooth rhythm from start to finish. That's a good indicator of if someone is confident on this event. Aggressive back handspring layout. If she hits this beam routine, it's going to be a really good improvement for Pitt on this event. Trying to drop that 9.05 from Matt, so one routine a go. Yeah, and she just had that look in her eye when she saluted that kind of said to everybody, especially the judges, I'm going to hit this balance beam routine. Big hop right there, but that was the biggest deduction that I saw. Hung on to it, no falls, and of course a good improvement for Pitt on this event that we're gonna see. Look how aggressive she is on that back handspring layout. Solid finish. You talk about highlights, you're about to see one from Bree Clark. 9-9 nine, nine in her Clemson floor debut last week. This is the Mountain Rim Conference floor specialist of the year, the reigning MRGC freshman of the year. And this first pass should be quite a treat for you. Huge double layout. First pass, she is capable of doing the Biles, which is important because very few people in the world can do that. 
Yeah, not just NCAA gymnastics, Sam, the world. She was just one of four freshmen in the entire country in 2022 to be named an All-American on floor. grow in this routine beautiful job opens double layout little knee bend slight knee bend I'm being picky because it was a really good routine but that's really most of what I saw in this routine I love that combination work at the end of a routine And so we'll wait on the final score. It came in for Beam, for Pitt, and we wait on Clarks to wrap up a fantastic afternoon of ACC Gymnastics. Clemson continues its strong inaugural season. Two meets down, both of them successes, a 196-2 to take down Pittsburgh. And we are joined by one of the stars for the Tigers tonight, Trinity Brown. Well, Trinity, first ACC meet. This is why you left Utah State with Amy Smith. For this type of experience, yes. what was it like to compete in this environment? I mean, when I tell you it's electric, it's literally electric. There's never a point where there's low energy or no one's looking. Everyone's locked in, including the gymnasts, including the audience. And I think everyone's just here for a great time, great energy, great emotions, you know, ready to let out some endorphins and just so excited to be in Little John with us. You just told us that this is the most fun Sunday you have ever had in yes, your life. What was yes. the highlight for you today? <laughs> I mean, I would say my vault. I just had a career high by 9-9 nine, nine on my Yurchenko full. But literally this audience, like that is my highlight every time. Everyone comes with so much energy and so much love in their hearts, ready to give it out to us. And they're just always here to support. And I just love Clemson, all the coaches, staff, audience, the family, the supporters. Everyone's always here to bring us up and give us all the resources that we need to do things like this and I'll literally go all the way to the top. Trinity, There's so much potential so much. for this yeah. Clemson team. Where <laughs> do you guys go next? Um, next week we go to UNC um, and we compete against the Tar Heels and honestly we just need to go there and do normal and you know like each meet we're continuing to grow and yeah little mistakes happen but all of these mistakes lead to something big and learning that it's not going to be perfect every time is what helps us be a great team versus a good team. Trinity, congratulations on a great afternoon. Thank you so much. You guys just keep making history. Go celebrate with your team. Yes, thank you. Go Tigers! <laughs> and that's really just the way that the entire program feels right now. Coming off of a 196-2, she mentioned it. Yurchenko, full new career high 9-9. Beautiful job, competed on three events. I can just imagine that she's gonna get this bug to continue to improve each week. And those sticks are electric for her, starting with vault, then on floor. Phenomenal job from Trinity. And she looks pretty comfortable wearing that crown. Clemson didn't start at the bottom of the ladder. They are midway, almost to the top at this point in the first ACC meet in program history with a 196-2. Not quite what they did in their first one with a 196-325, but Sam, another extremely impressive performance, and there's only up to go from here. Yeah, they improved a lot on those vaults, which has been a focus for them. And they looked really comfortable on beam and floor as well. So really showing a lot of promise for the rest of the season for Clemson. 
And for Pittsburgh, they go back to the drawing board after falling here at Clemson with a bit of work to do for Casey Jo McPherson in her first year, but she is working on getting this team up to where she knows they can be, hoping to peak by the end of the season and then into the postseason. That will do it for us here in Little John Coliseum. What an afternoon as we make history here on ACC Network with the first conference dual meet, and what a great time it was. With Sam Pesic for our fantastic entire ACC Network crew, I'm Alex Perlman saying so long from Clemson, South Carolina. It's another win for the Tigers.